ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर शैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तत जाय मुदीर नष्टाय शिवभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नष्ट की हरे कृष्णा ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन द लास्ट वीक for how many days four days today is the fifth day wow very good <laughs> so we are discussing about uh, churning of the milk ocean so you have to just wrap up or recap to refresh our memory because we don't have brilliant memory in kali yuga just to refresh it right what we discussed that indra offended durvasa muni then durvasa muni cursed him and because of that curse the gods lost all the opulences defeated by the demons and they went to lord brahma right and uh, lord brahma prayed at the shore of the milk ocean and after the prayer lord appeared but nobody could see only light <laughs> when lord appeared only light was there right effulgent highly effulgent thousands of sons just like that then again brahma prayed and after that lord spoke that stop the war don't don't fight now why don't fight because you are not favored by the spiritual master you are not favored by time and go to the demons and have a nice peace agreement and plan to churn the milk ocean and you also explain in detail a graphical presents presentation how this should be done and the whole preparation was done and now is the time from today we will discuss the process began a practical process of churning the milk ocean so what was the churning rod mandara mountain huge big size and golden mountain if it is in earthly planet they will not churn mandara mountain will not be visible after some time <laughs> because people will fill up their houses with gold that's why golden mountains are not there on this planet depending on the qualification natural opulences are provided just like uh, we have ocean of salty water but there are ocean of milk if there is ocean of milk in this planet <laughs> good news for uh, devotees then we don't have to buy milk every day we can go and take the milk from the milk ocean because people on this planet are not so opulent that's why they become greedy although greedy greediness does not depend on the opulence also so somehow mandara mountain was used as the churning rod and churning rope was basuki so big snake so the lord was holding the front side of the snake of basuki along with the demigods 
and the demons are holding the back side of the snake, the tail. But the problem is the de- problem with the demons are that whatever the demigods will do, they want to always protest. That is the nature of the demons. And they want to do the opposite. Popat is writing in the purport. Whatever the demigods will do, the demons will do the opposite. So here, the demons started thinking, why we are demons, we are more powerful, why we should hold the back side? The front side is auspicious, we will hold the front side. That is called demoniac intelligence. If you help them, they will think, no, 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 they are not helping us. Because you will know what will happen if you hold the front side of the Basuki. <laughs> the Lord was happy. Prabhupada in the purport is writing, you know, the parampara of divine and demoniac nature is going on. In today's world also, the devotee community talks about the glories of the milk and the other side of the society is claiming, no, 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 milk is dangerous. The beef is very healthy. We should take cow meat, not the cow milk. So always these uh, opposing opinions are there. That's why there are two categories of people, divine people and demoniac people. And always there is a fight. So I heard a story that uh, once there was a big argument between demons and demigods. And they went to Lord Brahma and started asking, who is greater? Demons or devotees or demigods? So they asked Brahma, although Brahma knew the answer, but he did not to give the answer. It was dangerous, no demons. They will give, if, they, if Brahma says that demigods are greater, Brahma will have hard time. Because uh, demons are very dangerous. So, Brahma didn't want to give the direct answer. For the demoniac people, even the truth has to be spoken very carefully. You cannot speak the truth, right or wrong. So, that's why when we spread Krishna consciousness, we have to spread in such a way that uh, we have to speak the truth. But we have to speak the truth in a palatable way. If you speak the truth as it is, there will be a lot of reactions in the society. So what happened? Then Brahma said that before I answer your question, better we take lunch. Lunch. He said, okay, no problem. So Brahma had a huge prasadam hall. But the number of demigods and demons are not, uh, are not so small, huge number. So they came, but Brahma said that I cannot feed all of you together. There will be two batch. So who will, in the, who will eat in the first batch? Demons said, Hui? why demigods? We should take the first chance. That is demoniac nature. They always, always want the first facility. So Brahma said, okay, no problem. Demigods also said, no problem. Then Brahma said, there is a system to be followed while you take lunch here. So there was dining tables, wonderful dining tables and Brahma said, I will hold a stick will be, two hands will be bound by sticks so that you will not be able to hold the hand, you bend the hand like that, okay. So that is the way we will arrange food for all of you. So demons are not so happy. So all beautiful deli- delicacies are there, beautiful, delicious prasadam, Brahma Loka, prasad, high class. So everything has been served, demons sat. But how to eat? Because you cannot fold your hand. So they are holding food like that trying to put in the mouth but falling all over the body 
and they are so upset, not able to release a beautiful lunch offered by Lord Brahma. And while this thing was happening, the de uh, demigods are laughing, <laughs> enjoying the scene. And demons are very angry. So they could not release Prashanu. Then first batch was over. Now is the turn of the demigods. So demon said, for demigods also, their hands should be bound like us, right? Brahma said, yes, yeah, same system, same policy. So the de demigods sat together and demons are waiting. Now you are laughing. Now it's our turn to laugh. So but demigods are better personalities. So they know. So what they did? Because dining table, one side, this one side there is a chair, other side also chair. So they used to, they sat like that. So demigods, instead of eating by themselves, they were feeding others. One demigod was feeding other demigod, other demigods were feeding the demigod in front of them. And in that way they are enjoying lunch and demons were wonderstruck. Wow! That is the difference between demons and demigods. So, when you cooperate together, or the, it means when you help each other, then you enjoy more. But in this world, we are always thinking, how I, I will enjoy. Nobody is thinking of others. But if you help others, if you make others happy, then automatically you will be happy. You don't have to try for that happiness. But we don't go in that direction because we don't have divine qualities. We don't have the quality of the demigods. So as we grow up in Krishna consciousness, the selfish motive reduces and selfless attitude increases. That is the process of Krishna consciousness. This world is selfish world. Spiritual world is selfless world. In this world, everybody is thinking how I will be happy. I is the center. But in the spiritual world, Krishna is the center. All the activities are performed to satisfy Krishna. Here, all the activities are performed to satisfy our senses. Right or wrong? Even we enter into Krishna consciousness, we are always thinking how I will be happy. Why I am chanting the holy name? Because I will be happy. Why I am doing devotional service? Because my anarthas will be removed. Always I, 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 I and I. Even in devotional service also. Because that is the conditioning we have as conditioned soul. But in the spiritual world, the consciousness is completely opposite. Everybody is thinking Krishna, 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 Krishna and Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. So Arjuna was not fighting, was not willing to fight. Why? He was thinking, if I become victorious, then who will see my victory because everybody will be killed? Who will see my glory? Nobody will be there to see. So what's the point of being victorious? And if I lose, I'll be killed? So in either cases, what is the benefit? There is no benefit. So, if there is no benefit, then what is the use of fighting? Better give it up. That is called selfish mentality. Arjuna was thinking about himself. But Krishna was giving a different dimension of life. He said, as a Kshatriya, it's your duty to fight. Whether you like it or don't like it, whether you become victorious or not victorious, it is your duty as a Kshatriya to fight. So you should fight as a Dharma. But here, Krishna is also, Arjuna is fighting not as a Dharma, he is going little higher level of consciousness, spiritual consciousness. So when spirituality is performed as a duty, that is known as Dharma. But when 
activities are performed for the pleasure of the Lord, it becomes devotional service. So fighting in the Kurukshetra war by Arjuna is not dharma. He was performing pure devotional service. Why? Because he was fighting for the pleasure of Krishna. Why he was fighting? Because Krishna will be pleased. So in the same way, in our Krishna conscious life, we have to think that how Krishna will be happy. I am doing this activity, Krishna will be happy or not? That is the consciousness we should cultivate. Many things may satisfy us, but that is not the goal of our life. We have done so many things in our life to satisfy ourselves. And what is the benefit of that? We have to take birth again and again, again and again, again and again. Janma mitu jaravadi dukkha doshana darshanam. This cycle of birth, death, birth and death will continue. One of Srila Prabhupada's disciple, very senior devotee from Mayapur, his name is Janani Prabhu. And he told that three words are enough to keep us in this material world. What are these three words? I like it. That is the slogan na, of the modern society. I like it. Prabhuji, I like to do this. I like to do that. I like to do that. Okay, no problem. Do that. And stay here. If you want to go to the spiritual world, if you want to come to my kingdom, you should do what I want you to do. That is Krishna consciousness. So it's very important. That's why the pure devotees, they don't aspire anything. Na dhanang, na janang, na sundaring, kavitang ba jagadisa kamaye, mama janmani janmani share bhavatad bhakti rahito kitai. They want causeless devotional service life after life because they know that is our natural constitutional position. That is the qualification to be with Krishna. If you have other concept of life, then that's also okay. But we have to be in this world and suffering in this material body. So if we want to get a spiritual body, then our consciousness should be spiritual. And what is that consciousness? Consciousness to please Krishna by our body, mind and words. So that is the nature of the demigods. They always cooperate, cooperation. If you cooperate, Krishna will manifest. If there is no cooperation, Krishna will not manifest. Cooperation is very, very important. That's why demigods, what is the qualification of the demigods? They cooperate. Now they are enjoying. Why they are enjoying? Same food. Demons are not able to enjoy, but they are able to enjoy. Why? Not the food was different. Not the situation was different. Everything was same for the demigods and demons. But demons are not able to enjoy, they are frustrated. But demigods are enjoying. In the same way, this world is not going to change. This world will be the same. Just like the same food was given, the hand was also bound in the same way. Everything was same for the demigods and demons. In the same way, whether we are devotees, or demons, whether we have divine qualities or demoniac qualities, the world is not going to change. We think like that, oh, we have become devotees, world will change for us. No, world will not change. Who should change? We should change. That is Krishna consciousness. And when we change, then what will happen? Our experience of life will change. The surroundings will not change, but the outcome of our activity will change depending on how we are handling the situations. It's called attitude. It's called how we look at it. Just like water is kept in a glass and half of the glass, the water is half. Some will think, oh, 
द ग्लास इज हाफ एम टी एंड शाम विल सी द ग्लास इज हाफ फुल कुछ इज करेक्ट कुछ इज करेक्ट वो तर करेक्ट द ग्लास इज बोथ हाफ फुल एंड हाफ एम टी सो वॉट वे वी शुड सी Why? Because that is the positive outlook of the life. A devotee does not see problems. What he sees problems as opportunities to advance in Krishna consciousness. And other people problems. Oh, what will happen to me? What will happen? What happen? What happen? Disturb. Right or wrong? so for those who are not steady in krishna consciousness those who are not endowed with divine qualities small things will disturb them but those who are very steady in krishna consciousness those who are endowed with divine qualities nothing in this world can disturb them parikshit maharaj the glaring example he was a king not king of the family not king of his uh, surroundings not king of a country he was the king of the whole planet powerful king wonderful king pious king and pure devotee also he is a pure devotee of krishna he saw krishna in the womb directly parikshit so what happened to him he was cursed that he will die in 7 days if we are put into that condition what will happen to us what happened what happened what happened we are pure devotees we are running the kingdom so nicely everything is nice but why i am cursed to die we will try many different ways to come out from that curse right or wrong and we think that is intelligence Prashit Maharaj had the full potency also to come out from that curse. There is nothing for him. But Prashit Maharaj was very intelligent. He thought, I can come out from this curse now, but that does not mean that I can escape death. I have to die one day. Nobody can change that. So now I have seven days notice. but in the future i may not have seven days notice and exactly it happened to kattanga maharaj kattanga maharaj was fighting with the demigods fighting taking side of the demigods and defeated the demons such a powerful king the demigods used to hire no see the level we are praying to the demigods please give this give that but kattanga maharaj was such a powerful king in order to fight against the demons he was hired so outsourcing is coming from bhagavatam also right so when you need you have to outsource it right so parikshit maharaj not parikshit maharaj kattanga maharaj was invited to fight and he agreed to fight and very nicely fought and demons were defeated and the god wanted to give some gift out of love she said okay i don't want anything you are demigods having some higher dimension of life please tell me how much time i have in my life then they calculated say you don't have time you have only one moment because he knew so immediately he entered into trance and went back home back to god in one moment but for us we don't know the seven days or seven minutes or seven months or seven years we don't know but we are happy oh so nice this planning that planning and what we are not planning for the real thing so many planning is happening in our life but the real planning of our life is not taking place that is the 
beauty of Krishna's material energy. Krishna is very intelligent. He does not have to do anything. That covering potency is enough for him. He just covers the intelligence of the conditioned soul. So in that way we have to understand that a devotee is not disturbed. Rather he becomes grateful. So Parikshit Maharaj is glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thanking him, my dear Lord, you are so merciful that you have appeared in the form of the cars of the Brahmana boy. So he took it as mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he prepared himself to leave his body. And in seven days he perfected his life and went back home back to Godhead. So that is the perfection. That was a big challenge. Right or wrong? But how he took it? He was disturbed, no? He took it as an opportunity to associate with Sukadeva Goswami and hear Srimad Bhagavatam and perfect his life. So for a devotee, challenging time is very important. If there is no challenge, there is a tendency to decline. Complacency leads to decline in spiritual practice. And I have seen that also in many devotees' life, including my life. Easy life is a life of decline. Challenging life is a life of advancement. So when you take up challenges in Krishna consciousness, the, there will be progress. But if you have easy life, nothing is going to happen. So challenging life is glorious life. Sacrifice, life of sacrifice, life of taking challenges, life of difficulties, that make people glorious. Why? Because Lord wants to show to the whole world, see how he is responding in this difficult time. That is the advertisement. And Lord does this advertisement through his own persons, his own pure devotees. So Parikshit Maharaj is, the so, uh, is an example for us to follow that difficulties will come in our life, but how to respond in our difficult situation. But that needs divine quality. So what happened after that? Then churning started. So now demigods are at the backside, means holding the tail. And Demons were holding the front side, mouth. Chanting was happening. But Mandara mountain was so big and there was no support. What happened? Mandara mountain sank into the ocean. Now they are depressed. <laughs> what to do? What to do? Any activity, we, we get discouraged by failures. So Lord is showing us that in order to achieve the desired goal, we have to go through failures. Failures will be there because that is a test in our journey. So both are discouraged. Demons are more discouraged. Then Lord appeared in the form of a tortoise, Kurma Avatar. And what was the size? Size of the tortoise? 800,000 miles. What a tortoise! 800,000 miles. The circumference, the size of the back. And on that, he has put Mandara Mountain as a support, support system. See what a support system. And uh, Again, the churning began. You may think, oh, what pain tortoise must be getting, right? Such a huge mountain on the back. If something is like that on us, we'll die. But it is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam that churning, that's the glory of Krishna. Whatever situation he enjoys. So he was feeling the sensation. Itching sensation, 
like a massage, you know, <laughs> massage at the back. Naturally, is happening, and he was enjoying. Tortoise was enjoying. The Lord was enjoying the churning. Now at that there is a support system at the bottom, but there should be support system also at the top. So Lord manifested Himself at the top also. So now after that, the devotees, demigods, and demons, they are getting very tired. It's, it's a huge activity. So what Lord did? Lord entered in the form of goodness into the demigods, in the form of passion into the demons, and also in the form of ignorance into Vasuki. So everywhere is God. So demigods, there is God. Demons, there is God. Vasuki, God. Mandara mountain, God. The bottom of the mountain, Lord himself. The top of the mountain, Lord himself. So who is doing this churning of the milk ocean? Lord. But we don't feel like that. We think, I have done it. We are doing it. That's why, who claims like that? Those who are fools. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Prakite kriya manani gunai karmani sarvasa ahankaro bimuratma kattaham iti mannata. Everything in this world is done by three modes of material nature. But we are thinking, I have done it. Who is that person? Bimuratma, not only fool. Super fool. <laughs> Idiot. Fool number one. They think that I have done it. So everything is done by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Either directly or indirectly. For for conditioned soul, he does it through three modes of material nature. For the devotees, he does it directly. And we have to realize that. Here, in this churning of the milk ocean, everything is being done by him only. In the Kurukshetra war, also the same thing. Arjuna was not willing to fight. He said, either you are fighting or not fighting. I have already killed them. I have done the part. But now I need to give the credit to you that you have killed it. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. In the same way, Mahaprabhu, when he spoke, Prithivite Achajata Nagaradi Gram, Sarvatra Pacharita Haive Nam, in every town and village all over the world, holy name will spread. It's already done. Now, whoever will do it, he will get the credit. So, if we do it, we will do the credit. If we don't do it, somebody else will do and get the credit. We should not think, we are doing it. It's already done by the Supreme Personality of God. But, Lord wants to give the credit to His devotees. That's why Prabhupada got the credit. Now, it's up to us whether we want to take the credit or not. If you become detached from the credit, then you can give the credit to others and let somebody else do it. But this kind of credit is very important in our life because that pleases Krishna. Because he wants to see that we all do these activities and Krishna wants to give credit for that. So in that spirit, the scene has been created of chanting of the milk ocean and we will see what happens after that. And that will be discussed tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Questions? Any question or comment? Prabhuji's, Mataji's? There's a thousand, there's another form with, I think, thousands of uh, hands and something like that. Ajita. How many hands? Many hands. So, he appeared as Ajita. And also, I forgot to mention, he also appeared as Nilamani, Nilakanta. He also appeared to chant the Vasuki. That, that, that work also, who was doing? The Lord. So everything the Lord was doing. Okay? Question? Huh? We are also facing problems with everything in materialism. But devotees are also facing, they are chanting, they are engaging in 
They are asking or we are also asking? <laughs> we all have the same question. So whether we are chanting or not chanting, the external situation. Tell them, wait two minutes. External situation is not going to change. A devotee or not a devotee, the material world is not going to change. Now we have taken our devotional service, we will not die, definitely die. We will not become old, definitely. We will not get disease, definitely. It's common difficulties. We have other problems also. Sometimes devotees face more problems. When Krishna is very pleased, more problems. <laughs> That's why we want to please very less because Krishna's pleasure is very dangerous. If Krishna is highly pleased, Krishna is telling, I take away everything. It is declaring in Srimad Bhagavatam. When I'm specially pleased with some devotee, I take away all his positions. If somebody hears this verse or reads this verse, he will like to please Krishna. <laughs> very dangerous. But devotees, they know that nothing belongs to us. So is the question of taking. When we feel that is ours, that, that can be taken, no. But devotee does not think like that. Devotee knows that everything belongs to Krishna. So is the question of taking. That's why our Acharyas are explaining, Krishna takes away those material possessions which are not engaged in Krishna's service. That will be taken away. But if you engage everything in Krishna's service, Krishna will give more and more and more. And if you don't engage, Krishna will take more, more and more. So choice is ours. We want to engage in the service of the Lord or we want to engage that thing in our activity. So your question is that a devotee or not practicing devotee, any other person, why the same? Because material world is not going to change. It will be the same. Then what is the difference? Prabhupada made a comment, a cat will die, a dog will die, everyone will die. But a devotee, a person who dies knowing Krishna is a successful death. So when, you are, when we are Krishna conscious, then what happens if we die, then we will not take birth again. But it doesn't mean that we will not die, definitely die. But we will not die again because we will not take birth again. It's good or bad? It's good? Thank you. But if you don't practice Krishna consciousness, oh, what's the difference? There is a big difference. You have to take birth again. That was the problem will come again and again, again and again, life after life, life after life. But when we take up the process of Krishna Consciousness, we will not be affected by these problems in this life. We will be totally undisturbed. That is the advantage of being Krishna, in Krishna Consciousness. A devotee is not disturbed by this world. A devotee is not affected by this world. But those who are not devotees, they will be affected by this world. That is the difference. They will not be affected by this and they will enjoy life. And after this, what will happen? They will enter into the world of eternal enjoyment. It's good or bad? So, it's, it's intelligence to become devotee or not? First, we have to be inspired. Because we are not inspired. <laughs> That's why we are not able to inspire others. We are not convinced. So, depending on our inspiration, others will be inspired. So, first we have to preach to ourselves. We are thinking to deliver so many people, but before delivering others, we should deliver ourselves first. Charity begins at home. Okay. When we are delivered, then others will be delivered by our association.
ओके सो यू लेन योर क्वेश्चन प्रभु सो यू कैन एंड बिकॉज लॉर्ड इज वेटिंग टू गिव दर्शन सुले प्रभु पाद की जाय गंतराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जाय निताय गोर प्रेम आनंदे हरि हरि बोल हरि बोल